guys, welcome back to Beloved Always. Hope you're doing wonderfully well. So I've shared my hair journey with you and now I'm sharing my weight loss journey with you. So I'm opening up about a lot of the things that God is kind of doing in my life. And I hope this will encourage you because I know a lot of us do struggle with our weight and with honouring our temples. And I pray that you will see that there is victory to be gained in this area. So we're going to take it right back to the beginning where it all started. And we're going to come forward into where I am now and how I knew I had to make that change in my life. As much as this video is focusing on weight loss, I do want you to kind of take away the core spiritual lessons from it, which is self-control, temperance and honouring your temple. Because ultimately, if we walk in all of those things, weight loss will just be a byproduct of that. It is going to be a bit embarrassing talking about this because I'm going to have to kind of uncover some truths about myself. But I hope this will be informative and inspirational for you. So when I was younger, I loved food. I mean, I love food now. I've always loved food and I will always love food. But I really, really loved food when I was younger. So I was quite chubby. And that was in my primary school days when I went to school. I was quite a lot heavier than all the other girls in my year. And I did notice. I remember when we would weigh ourselves... Um, they were like five stone or four stone and a half and I was like six stone So I was a lot heavier than everyone and um, from a very young age And that is something that I think did knock my confidence a bit But it didn't last with me very long Because as I grew up and I went to secondary school the weight came off and I think that was just baby fat So, you know when you're growing up you hold on to a lot of weight But then as you grow into adolescence you lose that extra fat so I got involved with a lot of sports. I was involved with athletics, running, basketball, dancing, um, rounders, so many different sports. So I was always active and the weight just came off. But at the same time, my eating habits were still very poor. So I did eat a lot of unhealthy foods, a lot of high fat foods, biscuits, crisps, um, processed meals. And because I was so active, it never really caught up with me. It always balanced out. So I never had that increase in weight. When I got to university, I was in a relationship and that relationship kind of fueled my gluttony and my love for food because the guy I was with would always take me out to eat. Whenever we met, we would go out to eat to a restaurant or for lunch or to a fast food joint, anything. It was always food, 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 food. And that kind of is when I put on a lot of weight. In the space of two years, I put on two stones. And it got worse because when we broke up, I started comfort eating. Comfort eating is something I always had from a young age as a child. I remember chocolates, ice creams, um, salty chips and stuff were the things I would go to when I was feeling upset. But it really came out in me more after this breakup. And it kind of filled that void that I got when I was heartbroken and when I was lonely. But of course, it's just food and so it never satisfies and you just keep going back for more and more and more. And that's just how I dealt with the breakup. It was through comfort eating, it was through um, indulging in myself and my flesh. When I wanted to eat something, I would go and get it. I had no real filter. I stopped exercising as much as well, so that's how the weight just kept piling on. At my heaviest, I was 146 pounds and I'm five foot two, so that put me in the overweight category for my BMI. So your BMI is like a measurement of how much you should weigh proportional to your height. And for me, that was a lot because of how short I am. The healthy range is between 18.5 and 25. And I was like 27, 28, even though my BMI was overweight, I didn't think anything of it because I was normal relative to the people around me. Obviously being African, I think it is common in my culture for the women to be a bit more curvy and voluptuous and have excess weight and that should just be normally accepted um, but when I saw the numbers and I realized whoa okay I'm actually overweight and if I don't do something about this then this is just the road I'm going to go down for the rest of my life it was a bit of a reality check but I didn't change then it was when I came to Christ and I became a Christian that God started convicting me of loads of different sins in my life and one of the sins that he convicted me of was gluttony he convicted me that the diet I was eating was unhealthy. It was a diet solely based and fueled upon my fleshly desires. It wasn't a diet based on wisdom. I wasn't self-controlled and I wasn't temperate. I just ate what I wanted when I wanted to eat it. I didn't care for my temple. 
I didn't look after my body. I didn't really care about my health. Even though I knew that these things were harmful for me, I still indulged in them because it was satisfying for a moment. It did satisfy a craving or fill a void temporarily. And he wanted to break me away from that. He wanted me to come to him as a source of comfort, to come to him as a source of um, strength. When I needed someone to speak to, or when I needed my emotions to be offloaded in a way, he didn't want me to run to food, he wanted me to run to him. And I made a video on gluttony shortly after I received this conviction, because that's when I started going on that journey to not just losing weight, but actually changing the way I perceive food in my life and the role that it has and how I can best eat wisely and honor my temple. As I read scriptures more and more as well, I saw that the spiritual discipline of fasting was nowhere to be seen in my Christian walk. Yes, I prayed, I read the word, I fellowshiped, but I didn't fast. I didn't fast in the biblical sense of abstaining from food and realizing that I don't live by bread alone, but by the word of God. That wasn't something that I had connected with. And so I was very much dependent on food. I was very much living to eat, looking forward to my next meal, planning around food, um, you know, socializing around food, everything food, food, food. And I guess that's just what we see in our culture. That's just what we see in the world. Everything is food driven. Everything is um, instant gratification, you know, treat yourself, indulge yourself. And that was something God was displeased about that I had adopted and he didn't want me to be in that place anymore. So this was all happening around 2016 when I was abroad again. It seems like all of my encounters with God in terms of radical lifestyle changes happened when I was abroad. Um, this was when I started doing a lot of this sort of research and thinking, okay, I need to change. I need to actually understand how food has to have a place in my life. And so one of the first things that God introduced me to was fasting. And so I started fasting more. I had a day in the week every week when I would fast and I would fast it started off very very small it was like fast till 12 p.m. I mean that was a struggle for me because I was so used to eating breakfast and then snacks mid-morning snacks and then lunch and then midday snacks and then dinner and then post-dinner snacks so for me to not eat until 12 lunchtime that was very difficult but then you know I slowly built up from there I slowly started fasting for longer started doing different kind of fasts. So one of the fasts that I started to love was the Daniel fast. I tried it for the first time in 2016, around December, and I did it for three days. And it was bad, actually. It was very bad because it was actually, my mind and my heart was all wrong. I approached it with the attitude of, okay, because I can only eat these foods, I'm gonna binge on these foods. I'm, I'm just gonna eat so much of these foods. So even though I wasn't allowed to eat meat, I wasn't allowed to eat, um, processed foods because the Daniel fast is basically fruits and vegetables I basically binged out on all the others so God convicted me that you know you, your heart is still not pure even though you're fasting in quotes you're still approaching it in the wrong way and so I grew in that area and then I started Daniel fasting properly um, and I loved the Daniel fast and then I felt okay the Lord is leading me to adopt this as a lifestyle so I started looking into a plant-based diet as a way of living and the benefits of it and I'm going to do another video actually because I think this is quite important. So I do eat a plant-based diet and I want to share with you the reasons why I do. But I'll leave that to a separate video because it is quite hefty. Um, and if you would like to see that then do let me know in the comments. So anyway, I started eating a plant-based diet. It was bit by bit. Gradually I cut out like, you know, fish and meat and pork. I started eating more vegetables including a wider variety of foods and stuff that I hadn't really tried before because growing up it was mostly just rice and chicken um, with vegetables but it was mostly rice and chicken with vegetables um, porridge or Weetabix like I didn't have much of a vast experience of the different kinds of foods that was out there for me to eat started eating beans I love beans I love pulses I love all of those things um, and that's where I would say most of the weight came off when I started taking away a lot of the processed foods Another topic in the area of diet is portion sizes. So there's a thing called portion distortion where you eat the right foods, but because you're just eating too much, it's gonna cause weight gain. It's gonna cause you to have an energy surplus so that even though you know, you're know you eating healthily, you're still gonna be gaining weight. So you need to also measure how much food do I actually need for my daily activity. And for me, that changes from day to day. If I'm having a very, you know, 
sedentary day like when I was revising for my exams most times I was literally just sitting in the library I'd get up every hour or so for a little walk but that was it then I'd eat less because my body doesn't need as much fuel however if you're having a very active day maybe you're traveling you're going to a different city you're walking about you're going for a run you're meeting up with friends then you would need to eat more so you have to manage your energy intake for how much you're expending in that day the next thing that the Lord kind of led me into more and more was upping my activity levels so i wasn't really doing much in terms of activity like i wasn't even walking many places i was getting public transport getting the train getting the tube i wasn't having a healthy active lifestyle so that's something he kind of built up into me and you know i was like okay so what do you like to do i had gotten out of running and then so i started getting back into running and i was very unfit i mean i couldn't run for 15 minutes without almost dying um, and so I had to start building up my stamina, building up my cardiovascular resistance, building my strength, going to the gym, doing some weight training, and generally incorporating activity into my day. So now what I do a lot is walk. I walk a lot and I love walking because not only is it beneficial physically, but for me it's also emotionally and mentally beneficial. I find that I, I, I have so much peace when I'm walking, I can let off steam, I can meditate, I can listen to music, I can process everything that's gone on in the day. And so I started slow, you know, I would go for 20 minute walks, then build it up to 40 minutes, build it up to an hour. And now I can go for like two hours on a walk and you know, it's fine. It's just a normal part of my day. Especially if you're young, this is the time to be active. This is the time to get strength. This is the time to do things and challenge yourself and go out, not just, you know, waste away and, have body pain and aches like you know move your body what sport do you enjoy what do you like to do is it swimming is it dancing is it fencing is it basketball whatever it may be whatever your niche is find what you enjoy and incorporate it into your lifestyle if you want to start off doing it once a week just to kind of get the ball rolling it's fine there's nowhere too small to start but I mean, you have to take the pledge to actually do this in order to see the results. So exercising was a big part and is now a big part of my life. I don't even see it as a chore anymore. I look forward to it and I see it as a commitment because I remember when I first started this whole journey, I knew that I needed to get healthy. I knew that I wanted to get fit for God. And God reminded me that this is a commitment. This is a discipline. Even on the days where you don't want to do this, even on the days where you don't feel like going to the gym or exercising or eating healthily i want you to do it as a commitment to me and as a commitment to honoring your temple this isn't a quick fix i'm not here to sell you a quick fix to losing weight because i don't believe there is one it took me four years to lose 30 pounds four years of consistent hard work diligence loads of slip-ups loads of failures but getting up each and every time and it's important to realize that if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to become more healthy, it's a lifestyle thing. It's something that you do with the future in mind in terms of, okay, this is how I want to live my life. This is how I want to do things for the next 20, 30 years. And so it has to be sustainable. It has to be something you can commit to. I mean, for me, if I go back to the way I was before, all of the work and all of the weight will just come back. So it's about persevering, it's about enduring in that journey. It's not something you just do for a short term result and you know, go back to how you were living before. I think it takes time because there needs to be a renewing of the mind and not just a changing in the outward behaviors but a renewing of your heart as well. And that's why I think that doing it God's way and listening to the Holy Spirit and allowing him to lead me in all of these things has been beneficial because it's taught me how to restrain myself, how to, you know, be able to say no to myself when I want something that I know is not good for me or when I want too much of something. Um, I've had to learn to say no. I've had to learn to say, okay, not right now. And I've had to learn when to say yes. And those things are things that we as children of God need to know how to do. The way God may lead you in terms of you losing weight or in terms of you becoming healthier may be different to how he's led me because we have different things in our hearts. I was very gluttonous, I was very greedy, I emotionally ate, I binge ate, and I did all of the things that maybe you don't do. So I mean, definitely seek God in how you are going to lose that weight or how you're going to get healthy. But I want to encourage you to start now. Start now, start now, don't wait another day. I got a comment on the video I made about gluttony. 
about a week ago and it really made me think about how much this can kind of enslave you and how much insecurity is also attached with eating and putting on weight and stuff that I was led to share with him is fine you may have done so many different things yesterday or you may have done so many horrendous sins against your body in terms of eating too much eating unhealthily putting junk in but today's a new day and if you have breath in your lungs you can make a change now you can take this to God right now or after you've watched this video and say you know what Lord I'm not happy with how I'm eating I'm not happy with how I'm treating my temple I don't want to be a slave to my fleshly appetites I don't want to be a slave to my stomach help me to eat in a way that will honor you help me to eat in a way that will show that I am walking in wisdom and help me to treat my temple the way you would have me treat it I want to be healthy I want to be strong how can I do this you know take charge of this as your own journey stop giving excuses stop blaming other people stop blaming your past stop blaming people around you stop you know putting yourself in that pity pool because I've been there and it's not going to get you out it's time to decide that today is the day to make a change and oftentimes I have to continually remind myself about that desire I have to continually remind myself that okay I slipped up yesterday but today's a new day and today's the day to make a change and I'm going to do that today and Lord I'm going to trust you to help me and honestly I couldn't be more grateful for everything like the fact that I'm able to fit into clothes out actually a better size for my height I've been able to influence my family positively I've been able to influence my friends positively and just embodying someone who eats wisely and someone who does things spirit-led is a testimony to those around you when everyone in the world is eating um, out of their fleshly appetites or overeating or overindulging and you're exercising self-control and temperance then that will be a testimony for Christ and an opportunity for you to share your faith and the reasons behind why you don't eat certain things or the reasons behind why you do eat in a certain way and why you exercise and why you do different things to invest in your health. I strongly believe it's God's will for us to be in good health and of course sickness may come and you know God forbid but I may get run over or I may die of you know something that is out of my control but as long as I can be in control of my health and what I eat in terms of how I eat when I fast how I exercise then I'm gonna do my best to be a good steward of that so I've really gone through a lot in this video and I hope this has kind of given you a few nuggets I kind of just wanted to give a brief overview as to how God kind of helped me to lose weight and how I'm choosing to stay on that journey not so much of weight loss but of just living a healthier life living uh, a life that will honor God with my temple and a life that will bring him glory and I really pray that if you have felt the Lord kind of tugging you and convicting you about the way you eat, about how you treat your body, about how you don't exercise and stuff, that you would see this as a nudge um, in obedience and in a way that will help you to kind of walk in liberty in all of these areas of your life. I give God all the glory. I couldn't have done it without him because there were so many days that I was just like, oh, what's the point? You know, I don't see any changes. I look the same. I mean... I'm always going to be big or I'm always going to be large and I kind of did persevere and he helped me to persevere it wasn't by my own strength at all and I saw over time how the changes were coming and that's just such an amazing testimony as much as God is interested in our spiritual walks and you know our study of the word and our prayer but he's also interested in our physical bodies and our health in what we eat and how we live and I want you to kind of feel open to bring those things to him and talk to him about everything and anything that's in your heart because he's a father to us and he cares. I'm sorry it's been a bit chaotic. I did have a plan of what I wanted to say but it kind of went out the window. But I do hope this has helped you. I hope this has encouraged you and has given you that push that yes, you can start today. You can make a change. So I hope you have a wonderful week and take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.